Hi and welcome to this photography beginner tutorial. Today we talk about the ISO, what it is, what it does, what you need it for and how to use it with my nice Tiger antenna. My name is Benjamin Jaworski, photographer and adventurer. Ten years ago I started to teach myself photography. Today I travel the world as a professional photographer and filmmaker. Learn from my experiences, mistakes and tips and join me on my photography adventures. So today's the last part of the three-part shutter speed, aperture and ISO, triangle exposure thing. So the last thing that is missing is the ISO. What does ISO mean? I googled it because I didn't know actually, I just always thought it's ISO, it's, it's like ISO, so ISO. The name ISO comes from International Organization for Standardization and it's some Switzerlandish, English, Londonish togetherness thing and it's called ISO. So don't think about it. <laughs> it's just ISO and it has to usually called be iOS, but I don't know why it's ISO. So what the ISO does is much more interesting. So the ISO I call always is the turbo of your camera. It's like so it gives you the extra boost when shutter speed and aperture are on its limit. You can put the ISO up. In film times, like from your father or even maybe you do film as well, um, it was the film which has an ISO sensitivity which was lower or higher, so it's more sensitive to light or less sensitive to light. And in nowadays the sensor is more sensitive to light or the camera itself is more sensitive to light and you can get very nice images even when you have low light. So whenever you have not that much light available, the ISO is the boost and don't be afraid, I always say, don't be afraid of the ISO because the ISO is a helpful thing and it's not something you should always keep on 100 as many people say. In most of the situations when you are outside you stay on 100 but in a lot of situations especially when you're inside let's say you're shooting a wedding or you're inside and photographing your children or you're inside and just want to take some snapshots in a bar or you're whatever you want to have a nice fast shutter speed as you learned you want to freeze an action but it's too dark to freeze an action like of a running child or a running animal or something you have to put the ISO up and I show you now how the ISO works how to set it in the camera and what it actually does and which things might occur when you set the ISO high. For this I would say let's turn this light off. So we now only have the light here from the side so it's much darker and it's more like a usual ISO situation. So I go now on the tripod here in front and I have my nice Tiger Ant around, some, some Tiger Ant going on. Okay, I'm focused right now on my Tiger Enter. I'm on manual focus, but you can do it in autofocus, it doesn't matter. But in this situation now, the manual focus works best for me. So what I take now, or what I want now is, let's say the setting that we did before with the shutter speed, I want a fast shutter speed. So I want to have a 400th of a second. And as you can see right now, I'm on F7.1 and the image is just pitch black. So it's totally dark. And when I take an image now, it's just a black image. So what can I do? I can open my aperture. Okay, let's open the aperture. Because the 400th of a second I need to freeze the action. So aperture is open now, 3.5. That is the only thing I can do with that lens. So what else can I do? ISO. So I have the three things. The first thing I said, shutter speed. Second thing, aperture can't go much more open. Not much more light can get inside. So I need the boost, the turbo of the camera. So ISO up, I'm on ISO 100 right now, take a photo, black, just see a silhouette. Put the ISO up and right now to see an image, I'm on ISO 2000. And now I can see the Tiger Ant and I can even do a shot like I did before of a sharp Tiger Ant going through the image. And that is a nice thing about the ISO. So ISO 2000 with this camera is quite high, I, but I can even go higher. Let's say I want to have a shutter speed of 800. So I have to put my ISO up and I go now to the maximum 
The maximum on this camera is 25,000. And I can even go higher, look at this. 2,000, 4,000 of a second. Boom, 4,000, sharp image. Bam, no problem at all. But now you can see the disadvantage of the ISO. Let's turn this light back on again. Woo, so much light. The disadvantage of the ISO, or in most cameras, is that you can use the ISO in a certain range. But as soon as you start to set an ISO, in this camera, let's say, over 800, over 1600 of ISO, then you get noise. And noise is not like, Whoa! it's more like a lot of dots <laughs> in the image. So you have not a very clean image anymore, not a very brilliant or nice image quality anymore. It's more like a grainy analog thing. What I would recommend you is, don't be afraid of the ISO, use the ISO when you need it, and when you say, I just need a snapshot, but I don't have a flash, or I, I, I don't want to use a flash, then set the ISO up as high as you want. Because better have an image, then I have an image, or better have a sharp image, <laughs> then have a blurry image, because you need maybe a fast shutter speed. Or when you want to photograph a bird, but you say, ah, but I better keep the eyes so low, and then it's better, and then the freezing bird, uh, the, the, the bird is blurry, then it makes no sense. So it's always a helpful thing, but always keep in mind, when you put the ISO too high up, then the image gets noisy, and you must think about if it's worth it or if you just keep it low or try to go on a tripod if you can and keep the ISO low. But don't be afraid of it. And there are cameras which are very good in low light, like the camera we are filming with, it's a Sony a7S II and it can go till ISO 500,000. <laughs> so this is 20,000, 500,000. It looks almost the same shitty like this was but let's say till ISO 80,000, it looks great. So you can film it almost no light, with moonlight, and that is nice. I say the ISO is a great thing. It's good to know where your limits are on your camera. It's totally depending on the camera and the brand and the sensor, and give it a try. I show you now some images after the video that I took with very high ISO, and it's amazing what you can capture when you just give it a try. When you think about now setting the ISO, I always think about usually the aperture and the shutter first and the ISO usually is on 100 and when I need it higher, I put it higher. So it's very easy to set. And I will do another video where I show you how I set an exposure. So share the video with somebody who starts to photograph as well, who might be interested in this topic and write a comment which topics you want to hear something as well um, about on my channel. Okay, see you next time. Never forget, sag mal Einstellung, Digga, und haut da rein. Oh, and when you want to learn Adobe Lightroom the easy and fun way and start edit your photos, check out my full video course at learnfromben.com.